Click is a weird movie to talk about. Not because it's some misunderstood masterpiece or some complex art film, but for an Adam Sandler movie, it's not bad. And it was probably the last good one. When I say Adam Sandler movie, I of course mean his Happy Madison ventures. That means these two don't count. Would I say this movie's good? Well, it's hard to say. For a conventional comedy made at the time, it's alright, I guess. But for everything I like about it, there's something that I don't. I hate Adam Sandler. Yeah, he's all poo-poo jokes. No, I'm not going to be all snobby and pretend I hate every Happy Madison movie. I like movies like Anger Management, Billy Madison, The Wedding Singer. I just feel like Click was right before the turning point with stuff like... I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Pixels. Jack and Jill. Ugh. Don't even get me started on all that shit he dumped on Netflix. While Click is leagues above all that other crap, it still suffers from a lot of the same problems. The first minute of the movie makes you feel like you're watching a commercial. So many of these movies are just loaded with obnoxious product placement. Jack and Jill is probably the best example of this. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do! What's my name? Dunkachino! It's a whole new game! Dunkachino! You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. The main character of this movie is Adam Sandler. I swear, I just rewatched this and I don't remember anybody's names. The only name I remember is Morty, but that's just because Christopher Walken is the best part of this movie. You gotta have that funk! Woo! We got the funk! Yeah! The basic story just has to do with Adam Sandler prioritizing his job over his family. It's pretty cliche, but it's not the worst route to take when you're trying to play it safe. Adam works as an architect for his boss, David Hasselhoff, who only agreed to be in the movie if there were no Wendy's product placements. We're just sitting on the floor eating a Wendy's. You should be running around I have and you on her channel. I have him. Who they really should have cast was Jason Alexander. What do you do? I'm an architect. <laughs> You're an architect? I'm not. <laughs> Now the movie wants you to sympathize with him by having him say, Oh yeah, I work a lot and I focus on my job, but it's because I really want the promotion so I can have a bunch of money so my kids don't have to grow up the way that I did. And we're just supposed to be like, Oh, well he's flawed, but I guess since he's doing it for his family, that makes him a good guy. All he needs is a magical remote control to turn his entire life around. But then they go overboard in the first half, establishing what an asshole he is. He's a dick to his dad. He can't even make it to his kid's swim meet. He threatens to assault a bunch of teenagers. Then once he gets the remote, he uses it in the most selfish ways. But the worst thing about his character is that he just insults everybody all the time and acts like it's just cute and charming. Even Montel Williams thinks you're crazy and he's seen a lot of shit. But then as soon as he gets criticized, he acts like an insecure brat. This thing is worth more than your car. Now I know it's common to make your protagonist flawed so that you can give them a nice redemption arc by the end, but you have to give something to latch onto with the character so that you like them somewhat, and there's like nothing. And that's the problem with a lot of Adam Sandler movies. When he's not playing a really over-the-top character, he's just playing this guy. It makes it seem like the guy has no range when that's not really true. I've seen him do good stuff. Now before I go any further, there's something I want to address. A while back, me and my roommates were rewatching episodes of Goosebumps. We got to Season 3, Episode 5, which is titled... Click. In the episode, this kid is given a magical remote that gives him control over everything around him. And wouldn't you know it, the remote has a lot of the same abilities as it does in the Adam Sandler movie. Now, I'm not implying that they ripped off this episode. I mean, the stories are very different, and there's really only so much you could do with a plot about a magical remote. But if that's not the case, it sure is a crazy coincidence. But the one thing in this episode that's not in the movie is the ability to hit the eject button and Fusro da somebody across the fucking room. Anyway, there's this one scene I want to talk about because it's executed so poorly. 
Adam Sandler and his boss have to present a design to a guy named Prince Habibu. And of course, since this is a 2006 movie, the portrayal of Middle Eastern people is very tasteful. Stupid. You got it. The only joke they could come up with for this scene is a back and forth where Adam Sandler and his boss can't pronounce Prince Habibu's name. Prince Habibu. Habibu. You'd think they'd make it to where the boss doesn't know the name and the protagonist would. That would make him seem a lot more deserving of the promotion that he's after and a lot more likable in our eyes. Then his boss would look like an asshole, which he's later painted out to be anyways. But no, they've both got to be racist idiots who can't pronounce a simple name. All for a joke that's not even funny. No disrespect, Prince Habada Habada. Hubba Bubba. Habibu! So the whole point of the scene is that these guys don't really like his design. And I guess it's supposed to look like, you know, his work is underappreciated because they don't like this atrium with the waterfall. He gets a little defensive about it, but he's an architect. And it seems like he added something that they just never really wanted in the first place. Like, that's just a part of your job. And if this place is supposed to be a restaurant, having a longer bar and more table space seems like a good idea. Dude, fuck your waterfall. Okay... Also, if you're being commissioned by a fucking prince, I doubt you'd, like, have as many money troubles as he claims to through the movie. I got nothing out of this scene but questions. Anyway, let's get to this remote. So Adam Sandler's boss tells him that if he designs this building for these Japanese people, he might get a promotion. And even though it's not a guarantee, he cancels his family's camping trip just to get the job. His wife is understandably pissed, but he deflects it with the old, I'm doing it for my family excuse. So maybe make sure you don't keep disappointing the wrong people. No, honey, I'm not out drinking or gambling or hitting on chicks. I'm working my ass off so my family can have a better life than I ever dreamed of having when I was a kid. Then he insists that he has to watch this documentary on Asian architecture because it's so important for his job. And then this happens. So relax, hon. Adam Sandler gets so pissed off that he storms out, insisting that he has to go get a universal remote right this second. But it's like the middle of the night and he just told his wife to her face that he had to watch this documentary just to get her to stop arguing with him. Like, this is like 2006, that's not a smart TV, you don't need a remote to turn it on. And even though he speeds off in anger, it just cuts to him, like, not really being angry at all, I guess now that he's eating his McDonald's product placement. Oh look! More product placement. I almost feel like this whole movie cut to a commercial break. And I guess since everywhere else is closed, he goes to Bed Bath & Beyond. Probably because they had the biggest stake in this movie. Remember Nick Swartzen? I was murdered! You were murdered! So then he goes into the Beyond section, because it's Bed Bath & Beyond. And this is where we get introduced to Morty. Run, Morty, oh. run! I'll never do it, you'll never take me alive! Oh, wait, Rick! Oh. Now, the movie never really explains exactly what he is, which is fine. It's just the character type, I guess. He's like all-knowing and all-powerful, so he may as well just be God. Though I don't care that much for the movie Hot Tub Time Machine, there is a good running gag in there about characters like this. Maybe what you need isn't in here, after all. Maybe what you need has always been in here. Really? No. Here's something that's less a criticism and just more something I found interesting. Something stinks like stale french fries. <laughs> oh, that's uh, probably me. Earlier in the movie they established that he eats like shit all the time and that, you know, it's he's passing that on to his son. And I will give the movie credit, I mean it does establish things that do eventually pay off. But you have this whole plot line where he should be concerned about all the shit that he's been eating, but then you have all these, like, product placements for, like, horrible fatty food. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to learn from this. Should I eat right and exercise, or should I go out and buy a Twinkie? And it's even weirder to me that these big companies would have their products, like, featured in this movie. This movie where people are like, oh, fast food, junk food will kill you one day. You know, fast food shortens your life. Yeah, that's what I heard, but uh, the way my life's been going lately, that ain't such a bad thing. Anyway, Morty gives him this magical remote without telling him it's a magical remote. You get this fun little bit where Kate Beckinsale brings the argument back up, and then Adam Sandler pauses the TV and accidentally pauses reality. So he has this whole argument with his wife that she doesn't even hear. The way he finds out that the remote is magical is just so stupid. We all just hold it in for five minutes and keep the freaking volume down! Like, why would you do that? Why, why would anybody do that?
So now he's slowly coming to the realization of how this thing actually works. Oh, and I forgot to mention this running gag where his dog keeps fucking this stuffed duck. It's a funny gag on its own, but then later on in the movie, Kate Beckinsale makes like a couple of comments about how, like, weirdly enough, it turns her on. It's a little deviant, but it's kind of turning me on. Whose idea was this, and why would she agree to say these things? There's this other scene where he gets, like, very insecure about his dick size, and so he, like, tells his parents, you know, my dick's gotten bigger since I was a baby, right? And then his dad's like, You look like a little tic tac. <laughs> yeah. Come here, I'll freshen your breath. <laughs> that is not a joke you say to your dad. Who is writing this? <laughs> Holy motherfucker! If it wasn't obvious, they were shooting for that PG-13 rating. Adam Sandler goes back to Morty to find out what's going on with the remote. And then they have this fun little sequence where they go through the menu, like this is like a DVD or something. Like the making of is just his parents fucking. Oh, Teddy. Oh, is that my oh, parents? Oh, oh, They're oh, making oh, you. A lot of stuff they do with the remote is pretty fun. It's just misused through the whole thing. This guy has probably the most advantageous piece of technology he could ever have to improve his life and he completely fucks it up. Like he's at this dinner with his family and he decides to like use the remote to like skip past this whole dinner so that he can skip to doing work downstairs. But what's to stop him from just kind of like pausing the dinner? and then going downstairs while everything is paused and doing all your work. You could even like just take a shit, take a nap, do whatever, like for the longest amount of time, wh however long you feel like. And then you just go upstairs and then you unpause everything and then voila, you have all the time in the world to spend with your family. Like this guy claims to do everything for his family, but he can't even spend five minutes with them. He has to like skip over all that so that he can just draw out these buildings. At this point, it just seems like he's actively avoiding them, like he sees them as a nuisance or something. And then once he gets down to the basement, when he could just like leave everything paused and then just finish all of his work, for whatever reason, he just decides to hit the play button. And why would you even bother being an architect anymore anyways when you have this magical fucking remote? You could steal diamonds, become a bank thief, like anything. You could become a literal fucking god with this thing. It's just so bizarre to me that of all the features that this remote has, the thing he uses the most is the skip feature. Like if you want to skip through traffic or something, that's like understandable at the very least, but you're actively skipping over moments in your life. Like his wife wants to have sex, but she wants him to massage her first, and he's just like, oh, well I'm gonna skip over this, and he accidentally skips through having sex altogether. Like you're married to Kate fucking Beckinsale, and you don't want to give her a massage? Are you fucking crazy? The thing I would use more than anything would be that pause button, but he really mostly uses that to like beat people up while it's paused because he's too much of a pussy to like fight them. He even uses it to cause like bodily harm to a child. <laughs> like sure the kid was being a dick, but like dude, he's just a child. Everything he chooses to do with the remote just kind of shows his true colors. He's so much of an asshole that I don't even care to see him redeem himself. And when they ran out of fun ideas, halfway through they just decided to make a conflict and it's the stupidest thing in the world. Every time Adam Sandler has skipped something, the remote kind of like programs itself to like skip over that from now on. So now he can't have sex, he can't sit in traffic, and he can't wait for a promotion, and he just loses these big gaps in time. See, up until now, like, everything the remote could do made sense for, like, a remote, but I've never seen one that would do something like this. It makes no sense. So the second half has a lot to do with him just kind of, like, skipping around and losing these big chunks of his life. Eventually, he finds himself in the far distant future of 2017. I never understand why when movies set things only, like, 10 years in the future, they act like everything turns into, like, this sci-fi advanced society. There is one joke during this sequence that I do find legitimately funny. Also, Michael Jackson, the first man to clone himself, is now suing himself for molesting himself. So after 10 years, Adam Sandler is really fat because he ate like shit for so long, and he's alone because his family hates him because he's an asshole all the time. And his wife left him for Sean Astin, who is his son's swim coach. Adam Sandler treats him like shit the whole movie, I guess, just because he wears a Speedo or something. But then he proves to be like a very positive, like, father figure in the family. Like a way better one than Adam Sandler is. This isn't that long after Lord of the Rings. What is he doing here? And then he hits his head and the remote sends him into the future of the future. 
Can you hear me? Are you having difficulty speaking? Now he's old. He got liposuction to get rid of the fat, but now he's even more distant from his family. But then he finds out that his dad died, and this movie takes like a crazy tonal shift. It's really sad, and it's a well-executed scene. It's just so out of place. This movie goes from this... I got titties! I got, I got juicy titties! ...to this. I love you, son. You son. And then the stupidest thing happens out of absolutely nowhere. It's like someone said that this movie has no antagonist so far except for the main character. So they have Morty be like, oh yeah, I, it was really unfortunate I had to take your dad. By the way, I'm the angel of death. I thought an angel was supposed to protect people. I'm the angel of death. This isn't true and there's really no reason for him to say this or do this whole thing. Like, it seems at this point that Adam Sandler's already learned his whole lesson, but I guess it was also an excuse to have Adam Sandler skip to the future of 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 the future of... Now he's super old, and he's at his daughter's wedding, then he almost dies because his daughter calls Sean Astin dead, but then he pulls himself off of the sci-fi bed that's keeping him alive so that he can go tell his family that he was like a shitty dad even though they already knew that, but he wanted to make sure that his son didn't become a shitty dad, and he wanted to tell everybody that he loved them, and then he just dies. Now this alone could have been a satisfactory ending to the movie, but of course that's too depressing, so he wakes up and it's all just a dream. And now he's been given a second chance at being a better father and husband for his family. But then there's a remote and a note from Morty just kind of sitting there, so I guess that means that the whole thing was real. But then he just throws the remote away to symbolize that he cares more about his family. Even though at this point he should know that the only ramifications of using the damn thing is just using the skip feature. If you don't use that, you could still use the remote. Alright, I think I touched on everything I wanted to with this. So I guess that means I should answer the question, is Click a good movie? Not really. I still wouldn't call it bad either. Even with everything I didn't like, I mean at the very least there's some clever foreshadowing and they establish things that actually pay off. It's not just a bunch of random unconnected bits. I'd probably recommend it just for the weird tonal shift from the first half of the movie to the second, but that's about it. Anyway, I've already talked about this longer than anybody ever should, so uh... Bye.